This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're still on the uh, chapter on managing interest rate risk, but we're looking at futures. And in the previous lecture, I explained how our interest rate futures work, and we looked at a, a basic example. But I explained where the problems are in practice and in exams. And so now let's look at the full example, example four. <coughs> look at it with me. Uh, Barbara intends to borrow 40 million for six months uh, starting on the 1st of January. Today is the 1st of November, LIBOR is 6%. Now LIBOR is what you might call the, the basic rate, the official rate. It's the London Interbank Offer Rate, 6%. Um, that's the sort of basic rate, but individual companies will have to almost certainly pay more than 6% depending on their credit rating. Uh, and so here LIBOR is 6%. Uh, Barbara, though, because of her credit rating, uh, she pays 1% above. So she'll pay 6 uh, sorry, 7% as of today, if it was starting today. And she'll always pay 1% above LIBOR. Um, the loan isn't starting, though, till January. That's, sorry, that's today. And as always, by the time the uh, loan starts, LIBOR could have moved. LIBOR may have moved to 10%. Barbara will pay 1% more 11 Or LIBOR could have gone down to 2%. Barbara pays 3%. Uh, there are futures available. And so we're going to use futures to hedge the risk. So, let's start going through it. First of all, as of today, which is when? 1st of November. Uh, remember, the loan itself, we leave the loan at risk. We'll show what happens shortly. For the loan, we'll pay whatever the interest happens to be. To, in a sense, cancel that risk, as of today, we'll start a futures deal and we need to write down what the futures deal is going to be. Now, always set this out nicely in the exam, make sure it's very clear because, you know, even if you've done something stupid and get one bit of this wrong, you'll still get marks for the bits you've got right. So, our deal. First of all, are we going to buy or sell futures? Remember, you can buy now and sell later, or sell now and buy later. Well, I went through in the previous lecture, and I'm not going to repeat. I went through the logic. But if you're borrowing money, as is the case here, you will always sell futures. You sell today, we'll buy back later. If rates have gone up, Futures price will go down. Sell today, buy later at a lower price, we'll make a profit. Uh, secondly, which futures are we going to deal in? Here, they told us there are three available. And just as with uh, exchange futures, January futures must finish the deal by end of January, February by the end of February, March by the end of March. We always choose the first one after the start of the loan. The loan starts on 1st of January. We're at November. If it starts on 1st of January, we'll therefore go for January futures. We must finish by the end of January. We're going to finish on the 1st of January anyway. And the price is what? 93.5. Now, uh, finally, we need to know how many futures we need to deal in. 
And there are two things there. First of all, and I went through this again in the last lecture, I told you the rule and let's apply it. The amount we want to deal in is the amount of the loan, 40 million, But, as I explained before, because we're at risk for the length of the loan of six months, and futures profits are only calculated for three months, they're always three-month futures, we multiply by six over three. Always the length of the loan divided by three it's always divided by three because they're three month futures. If the loan was one month, you'd multiply by one over three. If the loan was 12 months, you'd multiply by 12 over three, and so on. Uh, that gives us the amount we want to deal in, which is 80 million. But you can only deal in fixed size contracts you'll always be given the contract size. And here, above the uh, futures prices, it tells us that the contract size is 1 million. And here it divides exactly. Uh, so we will deal in 80 contracts. If it didn't divide exactly, then as with foreign exchange, you'd round to the nearest number of contracts, which means it may be a bit more, a bit less than what's actually needed, but it has to be in whole size contracts. And so, just summarising, we'll tell the dealer today, sell 80 1 million January futures Uh, at whatever the price is, 93.5. And so remember, as of today, it is simply a phone call. The loan, we do nothing at all. We ring the dealer, sell those futures. All right, we'll have to pay a deposit, a margin, but um, we, again, always ignore that in the calculations. Otherwise, it is simply a phone call. Uh, no other cash changes hands. Obviously, we haven't got any futures, but it simply means we're going to have to buy back at a later date. So, that's today. We then sit back and wait until the start of the loan. And to show what happens at the start of the loan, we need to know what the interest rate is at the start of the loan. And it does say, assume that on the 1st of January, LIBOR has risen to 9%. Albeit, remember, Barbara always borrows at 1% more because of her risk. So, in fact, Barbara pays 10%. However, I also need to know the price of the January futures. Because just as the interest rate has changed, the futures prices will have changed. In a perfect world, they'd be 91. But in the real world, of course, things don't work perfectly. And so we're going to have to calculate or estimate what the January futures price will be. And we do it in exactly the same sort of way as we did with foreign exchange futures. As of today, 1st of January, uh, sorry, today is 1st of November. Uh, we know um, what LIBOR is and we know what the futures price is. And futures prices move with LIBOR, they move with the official rate. Uh, the only problem for us, of course, is they quoted in different forms. So, we, what we do is we say, well, the interest, as of today, as of today is 6%. Well, we restate it 
as an equivalent futures price. So the equivalent to 6%, 100 minus 6 is 94. Uh, as of today, the futures price, things don't work perfectly, there is always this difference. And the futures price of the January futures is 93.5. So it's a difference or a basis of 0.5. Uh, I need to estimate what's going to happen on the 1st of January, the start of the loan. But since these are January futures, then just as with uh, foreign exchange futures, we do know that at the end of the future, the end of the future, the January futures, is 31st January. We know that whatever the two figures are, the difference will be zero. I'm not going to write down because it is the same as with uh, foreign exchange, but we assume that the basis falls linearly to zero over the life of the future. And so on the 1st of January, well, we know the interest rate it's 9%, so the equivalent as a future would be 91. We want the futures price. Well, again, we assume it falls linearly to zero over the life of the future. So between now, 1st of November, and 31st of January, November, December, January is three months. Uh, as at the 1st of January, there's only one month left. And so the unexpired basis, the basis at the 1st of January, will be uh, 1 over 3 times 0.5, which will be... Uh, point 0.17. I think I've already said uh, interest rates and futures are always quoted to two decimal places, and not four as with foreign exchange. As a result, uh, what's our estimate of the uh, January futures price on the 1st of January? Uh, the difference from 91.7. And the futures price at the moment is lower than the interest, equivalent interest. Well, it always will be lower. If it's higher, it always will be higher. So what does it come to? It comes to 90.87. Uh, 83. Not my day again. 91 minus 0.17. So, we now know the interest rate. Uh, we know the futures price. So now we can show what happens on the 1st of January. So now let's do it. First of all, the loan. We left the loan at risk, so we pay whatever the interest happens to be. Barbara, remember, pays 10%. Uh, the loan was 40 million. Interest rates are always annual rates. The loan is for six months, so the interest will be six twelfths of the annual interest. So 40 million, 10%, six twelfths. Oh. Two million. Uh, we're paying interest, that's how much we'll pay. Completely separately, we calculate the gain or loss on the futures. It may be obvious which it is, but appreciate different figures, it could be different as to it being a gain or a loss. But to calculate, we always take the amount we've gambled, so the number of contracts, how many contracts was it? 80? times the contract size, which is a million, 
times, the difference between the sell and the buy prices. Well, remember, uh, we started the deal by selling futures, uh, and the price at that date was 93.5. We closed the deal at the start of the loan, and we just worked out the price will be 90.83. We take the difference between the sell and the buy price, and for reasons I've explained several times, always we divide by 400. It's annual interest calculated for three months because the three months futures a quarter of a year. Here, it was obvious from the beginning, I hope, we sold at higher than we bought, so it is a gain. And how much is it? 93.5 minus 90.83 divided by 400 times 80 times a million. I get 534,000. And because it's a gain, the sell price was higher than the buy, that's a receipt. And therefore, the net cost ends up being 2 million minus 534,000. That's better if I do it in my head, I think. It's 1466. Uh, zero, zero, zero. So there's the net cost. Uh, because it's interest rates, very likely in the exam, you'll be asked to calculate effectively what interest have we ended up paying. Well, effectively, we end up paying a net 1.466 million on borrowing the 40 million. So the effective interest. is what, uh, 1466 on 40 million. But that would be the effective interest over the six month period of the loan. To turn it into a 12 month rate, and we'd always want the effective yearly rate, uh, multiply by 12 over six. And so the effective interest we end up paying I think comes to 7.33%. Uh, and of course, again, we've not, what you might call, fixed it. Uh, if, she, if she borrowed today, we already wrote down, Barbara would have ended up paying 7%. Uh, she actually ends up effectively paying 7.33%. Uh, but the reason is, in general terms, it could have been because the contract size that meant we didn't gamble the exact amount. That's not a problem here. Uh, but the reason here we end up paying slightly more than she would have done as of today is because interest rates and futures prices, they move by different amounts. It's because of that basis. But there we are. All right, well, that's how futures work. All that uh, remains for this chapter is to look at interest rate options. And although uh, you've seen an over-the-counter option, interest rate guarantee, which was easy, here we're going to be looking at traded options. Uh, there's more to think about as those with foreign exchange options. But here there is a, a big difference. But that's the next lecture, the final lecture on this chapter.